Let me get going back here again, guys. <laughs> Worry does not empty tomorrow of its sorrow. It empties today of its stress. The Swedish proverb says, Worry often gives small things a big shadow. Isn't that true? Worry sometimes gives small things a huge shadow. And John Lovick says, A day of worry is more exhausting than a week of work. Isn't that the truth? A, a day of worry is more exhausting than a week of worry. B.C. Forbes says, if you, do the, if you do the best and the most you can today, don't worry about tomorrow. Dan Cresney says, Words, worry is the interest you pay on trouble before it comes. And I like this one by Mary Crowley. She says, every evening I turn my worries over to God because he's going to be up all night anyway. Isn't that a good one? I turn my worries over to God every night because I know He's going to be up anyway. It's a fact of life that we all worry, right? We all have those times. We know we shouldn't, but and we know it's wrong, but we do it anyway. Every time we hear about the effects of worry, we hear about it causes ulcers. It causes high blood pressure. It causes heart problems. And it drains us of our energy. Isn't it amazing this morning how it can drain us of our energy? It can just zap you. It can just take all your feelings and all your emotions out of you when you worry. We know these facts, but in spite of them, we still have to have, seem to have these times when we worry. Many people think that worry is the result of a fast-paced, high-pressure life that we live today. But the truth is, worry is not a 21st century phenomenon. It's been a problem for centuries. The psalmist tells us that worry leads to harm in Psalms 37 8. Proverbs tells us that worry makes a heart heavy in Proverbs 12 25. Isn't it amazing how heavy worry can make you feel in your heart when you're really under it? In the New Testament, Jesus has some things to say about worry. In Matthew 25, 6 through 25 through 34, he tells us how we can eliminate worry once and for all. There are four steps to eliminating worry. If we will believe and act on the words of Jesus, we can eliminate worry in our lives. The first one I want to talk to you about this morning, if you're taking notes, is to decide not to worry. It may sound oversimplified, but in this passage, Jesus states no less than three times, do not worry. Which indicates that whether we worry or not is our choice. It's our choice sometimes, church, whether we decide to worry or not. The decision not to worry is much easier to make when we realize what worry is and how worry affects us this morning and what it really is all about. First of all, we must realize that our worries this morning, our worries are trivial. It's amazing. I smack myself around sometimes and go, Mike, what in the world were you worried about? It didn't even come to pass. You were worried about this, and you were worried about that, and you, you couldn't figure this out, and it had you all upset and so uptight, that it didn't even come to pass. If you had that happen, you get all these thoughts and all these things going in your head, and you get so upset, and your stomach gets in such a mess, and then all of a sudden, it never even works out. And it was so trivial. In verse 25 in our scripture today, it says, Do not worry about your life, what you will eat what you will drink, nor about your body or what you will put on, is, your, is not life more than food and the body more than clothing this morning? Is life not more than food and the body and more than clothing this morning? We spend so much time worried about things such as clothes. And we worry about food and we worry about our health and we worry about money. We tend to ignore things that are of eternal significance this morning. Smith, Seth Smith is a famous blogger. Seth Smith's April Fool's blog was a post about a new app in development called the Worry App. He was going to make a Worry App. This handy software from the program compiles everything the web knows about you, including things you don't even know about yourself, and then computes it into to an actual thing to worry about. Seth says instead of spending time fretting about things that are extremely unlikely to happen, now you can experience failure, failure in advance on issues that are actually more likely to happen. Worry about the right stuff, he says. 
Your sleepless nights can now be more than, more than just productive because your sleepless nights can be about the right things. It's just a joke, but it's worth thinking about. What if an app really could list all the right things to worry about? Which items would be on your list? Believers already have such an app. In the back pages of your Bible, you probably have a coordinates that lists the key words on scriptures. If there's an entry about worry, take a quick note of the half a dozen or so verses and reference. You will note that none not even one has a good thing to say about the worry habit. There's no verse that says, therefore I say to you worry. <laughs> Have you seen that one? There's, there's no place that says, therefore I say to you worry. Worry with all your heart. Worry until your stomach hurts. Keep worrying and maybe things will get better on their own. You'll never find that in your Bible this morning, church. But that's the way we are. We tend to worry about things that have no eternal significance. Time Magazine ran an article a few years ago about a sergeant who had been wounded in battle. He had been hit in the throat by a shell fragment and has several transfusions. It says when he woke, he had a tube in his throat and he couldn't speak. He wrote a note to the doctor and asked the doctor, will I live? The doctor said yes. He wrote another note saying, will I be able to talk? And the doctor said yes. And he said with a big smile on his face, he wrote another note and said, then what in the world am I worrying about? We worry over some of those trivial things sometimes, church. And also, I need you to know this morning that worry, worry is a waste of your time this morning. In verse 27, it says, which of you by worrying can add one cubit to his structure? Another translation in the NIV says, who of you by worrying can add a single hour to his life? We can't add a single hour to our life by worrying, but we sure can take a lot of minutes off of it, amen? Worry can really get to us sometimes. Worry is like cultivating and watering ground where you haven't planted any seed. You've wasted water and time and energy and still have nothing. It's easy to make the decision when we remind ourselves that worry, worry is a waste of time this morning, church. And also, worry is beneath your dignity this morning. Can I tell you that this morning? Worry is beneath your dignity. In verse 26, look at what it says. It says, look at the birds of the air. For they neither sow nor reap nor gather in the barns. Yet our Heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more valuable than they are? Church, do you hear that this morning? Are you not more valuable than they are this morning? You are God's creation this morning. Do you realize that this morning? God made you in His image. God made you in His likeness this morning. He created you and me for fellowship this morning. That's why He made us this morning. It's beneath your dignity as God's creation to spend your life worrying this morning. His plan is that you might have an abundant life. The scripture says that he came to give you life and to give it to you to the fullest this morning. God wants you to live a fulfilled life this morning, not eaten up by worry. Isn't it amazing how worry can just eat us from the inside out? How it can destroy our joy and take away our vibrance this morning and keep us from being all that Jesus died for us to be? He wants us to have an abundant life this morning, church. It says not even the birds worry this morning. Jesus tells us God certainly doesn't want you to worry this morning. And also we need to realize that worry is a sin. In verse 30, Jesus says that worry is a result of lack of faith. Anything that is not of faith, the Bible says, is a sin. In Romans 14, 23 this morning, by worrying, we are saying in effect that this situation over which this is a situation which God has no control over. God is helpless, and I'm on my own. Ah, church, we know this morning without a doubt we're never on our own. Amen? Amen. We are never on our own. He's as close as the mention of his name this morning. He sits at the right hand of the Father, and he intercedes for you, and he intercedes for me. And whatever it is you're worrying about, whatever it is you're going through this morning, when we talk to Jesus and we ask him to help us, he's speaking to the Father this morning to bring you hope and to bring you joy and to bring you peace and to bring you answers this morning. So we don't need to worry this morning. Amen? God is at the right hand of the Father this morning, interceding for you and for me this morning. Do you, 
Do you see how unspiritual, how utterly sinful worry can be? Do you see how it can destroy your fellowship with God? It can take you out of fellowship with everybody. I've been there, I've done that, I've been so worried sometimes. I didn't want to talk, I didn't want to relate, I didn't want to pray, I didn't want to get in front of anybody. There's been many times that Kelly will tell you on Sunday morning, I'm so worried and so stressed out. God's trying to tell me why, Mike, you're preaching my word, you're giving... You're, you're presenting me. It's so amazing how worried can get us sometimes. And it takes us out of our fellowship with God. Because we're so wrapped up in it. And we're so consumed by it. That it steals our joy and robs our peace. And stops us from being all that God really wants us to be. Jesus is saying here this morning, don't worry. The first step to eliminating worry is to decide not to worry. You have to decide in your mind and in your heart this morning. I'm not going to worry about that situation and that problem. And I'm not going to let it get me anymore. It's, it's much easier to take that step when you see worry for what it is. It's trivial. It's time wasting. It's dehumanizing. And it's a sinful habit this morning, church. And God wants to deliver us. And God wants to help set us free from it this morning. The second step that Jesus shows us to eliminate worry is this. Trust God to take care of you this morning. Amen? Trust God this morning to take care of you. You're his child this morning, church. He wants to take care of you this morning. He wants to provide for you. He wants to be there for you. He cares about you this morning in ways that you can't imagine, more than we could ever dream possible this morning. Jesus cares for you and he cares for me enough that he came and he gave his life and he died for us. So don't you think he wants to take care of us this morning? You're his child this morning. He loves you today. In verse 31 and 32 it says, Therefore, do not worry, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or, or what shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles see. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. Your Heavenly Father knows this morning, church, the things that you truly, really need this morning. And don't you believe He's going to take care of those needs? He's not going to leave you as an orphan. He's going to take care of you this morning. A businessman ran to a friend of his who was a stockbroker who had always had problems with ulcers and high blood pressure. He goes, how's your health? He asked the stockbroker friend. Great, my ulcers are gone and I don't have a worry in the world anymore. The man asked, how did it happen? The stockbroker said, it's easy. I hired a professional worrier. <laughs> Whenever something comes along that I need to worry about, I tell him about it and he does all the worrying for me. The businessman couldn't believe it. That's incredible, he said. And I'd be interested in something like that. He said, how much does it cost? The stockbroker said it charges me $100,000 a year. The businessman said, how in the world can you afford to pay $100,000 a year? The stockbroker said, I don't know. I'll let him worry about it. <laughs> in the same way, the stockbroker gave his work to the professional warriors. We should give our worries and our cares to God this morning. Amen? The same way he was able to give those over. We should be able to trust God and believe God this morning, church, for all of our worries, for all of our problems, for all the things that we're facing this morning. Because he's our Heavenly Father who loves us and cares for us this morning and wants to love us immensely today. I love what 1 Peter 5, 7 says. 1 Peter 5, 7 says, cast. You say, cast to your church all your cares upon him, for he cares you this morning. Do you realize that this morning? Your Heavenly Father out of all the thousands and millions of people in the world this morning cares about you. He cares about you this morning. So he's saying, cast all your cares on Him this morning. For He wants to take care of you this morning. God has promised to take care of us this morning, church. Amen? It is God to let Him this morning. It's our job to let him, to let go. Quit trying to figure it out on your own. Quit trying to work it out on your own this morning. And trust him and believe him that he cares for you. And he's going to see you through and he's going to be there for you this morning. I love what Philippians 4, 6 and 7 says this morning. Listen to this question this morning. It says, be anxious 
for nothing. Be anxious for everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be known to God. And the peace, oh, do you hear this this morning, church? And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. Listen this morning, church, and the peace. Are you needing peace this morning? They're saying here, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your heart this morning, will protect your heart this morning, and your minds through Christ Jesus. Depending on God to take care of us means that we have to eliminate phrases from our conversations like, I don't know how I'm going to get by, or I just can't make it anymore. A young boy was driving a big hay rack down the road, and it turned over right in front of a farmer's house. The farmer came out and saw the young man crying and said, son, don't worry about this. We can fix it. Right now, come on in for lunch. Lunch is ready. Why don't you just come in and eat, and as soon as we get done, I'll help you get the hay back on the rack. The boy said, no, sir. He said, I can't do that. My father's going to be so angry with me. There's no way I can do that. The farmer said, now, don't argue. Just come in, have some lunch, and I, it'll make you feel so much better. The boy said, I can't, sir. He said, my father's going to be so angry with me. The boy, the boy said the boy finally agreed and went inside, inside with the farmer and took a seat at the dinner table. Afterwards, they walked outside to the hay rack and the farmer said, well, don't you feel so much better now? The boy said, yes, but my father's going to be so angry with me. The farmer said, nonsense. He says, where in the world is your father anyway? The little boy looked at him and said, he's under the pile of hay. <laughs> he's under the pile of hay. The key to eliminating worry and taking is to take God from underneath the pile of hay this morning, church, where we sometimes try and keep him and put him back in first place. Amen. So many times we keep God under all the stuff and all the things and God's saying, take me out and put me back into first place this morning and see what I can do with your life and how I can help you and how I can make sure you get through this morning. If Jesus cares enough to die for you and to save you this morning, don't you think he cares enough to take care of you? If he cares enough this morning, church, to die for you, don't you believe this morning that he cares enough to take care of you? God wants to take care of you this morning because you're his child. Giving Jesus first place in your life means, first of all, that you accept him as Lord and Savior in your life. Maybe some are watching this morning from home and you've, you've never done that. Or maybe even here there's someone who hasn't. Maybe you've never done that. Today is a good time to make that decision. You'll never have your mind free from worry until you surrender your life to Christ this morning. Even if you've been a Christian for many, many years, you still need on a daily basis to give him complete lordship of your life this morning, church. The reason many Christians struggle with worry and fear and anxiety is because they let their relationship with Jesus become a secondary priority in their lives. Jesus demands that he be first priority in our lives this morning, church. If he's going to be able to help you and to see you through and to get you through those problems this morning, he has to be first place this morning. Eliminating with worry begins by deciding not to worry, then trusting God to take care of you, and then giving Jesus top priority in your life this morning. I love that old hymn we used to sing, Trust and Obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus than to trust and obey this morning, church. We have to learn this morning to trust him and to obey him, church, and allow him to see us through. And the last thing this morning, number four this morning, live one day at a time. Verse 34 says this, therefore do not worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Amen? Each day has enough trouble of its own. Jesus is saying that we should handle the demands of each day as it comes without worrying about the unknown future and the things that may never happen. This doesn't mean that we should live an irresponsible, foolish existence. It does mean that we must avoid an anxiety-ridden 
an anxiety-ridden approach to life that destroys our peace. So many of us, church, live an anxiety-ridden life, amen? Anxiety rules and demands us sometimes in our lives, and we're never going to have the peace that we need until we learn to trust God and let go of that anxiety and trust the Lord to help us through and to give us peace and joy in our lives. You can't let anything or anyone steal your joy this morning, church. The joy of the Lord is my strength, amen? And the joy of the Lord should be your strength this morning. And we can't let anyone steal that today. The joy of the Lord must be our strength. It means that we focus our attention on the present and we take care of today's problems. We take care of today's problems. Jacob DeGroom attributes his success as a major league pitcher for the New York Mets to his ability to concentrate, to concentrate on the next pitch. He says that he can't afford to worry about the earlier bad pitch. He can't afford to worry about the power hitter sitting on the on-deck circle. His only hope to survive as a major league pitcher is to concentrate solely on the next pitch he's about to throw. It's the same way. We need to give our full attention to each day as it comes to us. We cannot worry about what happened tomorrow, but we can devote all of our energies to living today in a way that brings glory to God. This requires a certain amount of effort on our part. We can't approach each day thoughtlessly this morning, church. We have to take a long, hard look at ourselves and ask, what am I accomplishing for the glory of God today? And that will help us with our worries and our anxieties and the things that we're dealing with this morning, church. Mark McCormick, author of What They Didn't Teach You at Harvard Business School, says that he spends an hour each day deciding how to invest the other 24. He says, if we will take time out of each day to bring our worries to God and seek his guidance for every action, our worries will quickly disappear. As I conclude things this morning, I just want you to look back at these things with me this morning. This is a principle that Jesus is teaching in Matthew 6 is this. Simply actions eliminate worry this morning. Do you realize that this morning? Actions eliminate worry this morning. Do you want to eliminate worry? Then take action this morning, church. Decide not to worry this morning. Trust God to take care of you. Give Jesus top priority in your life. Live each day as it comes to you one day at a time. This is the kind of action that will help eliminate worry from your life once and for all this morning. Amen. This is God's word this morning, church. Will you receive it and will you believe it in his name today this morning? As the worship team comes this morning, would you stand with me as we close this morning? And you know, you know, we never want to close our service without giving you a chance to pray. If God's speaking to you or God said something to you this morning, we always want you to have that chance to come and pray or maybe just bring a praise and thank God for all the things that he's done and how he's blessed you. If you're watching from home this morning, we have a phone number that's on your screen that you can call in this morning and someone will be able to help you this morning and answer your questions and hopefully lead you to a relationship with Jesus Christ today. But as the worship team leads us and as we close this morning, Church, as there's something you've been worrying about, there's something you've been stressing about, there's something that's holding you back from being all that God wants you to be this morning. Like the one song Katie sang this morning, he who the sun sets free can be free indeed this morning, amen? But it's just trusting God and believing him and, and giving him the situation and the problem that you're dealing with, and he can set you free this morning. So if they, as they sing this morning, if God's speaking to you and there's something you just want to come and pray about, the altar is open. So sing and lead us this morning, worship team, as we close. Change.
thank you for this morning and God most of all help us to learn to trust in you Lord I know so many of my friends and I'm even talking to myself this morning we let worry keep us from being all and anxiety keeping us from being all that you died for us to be this morning so Lord I pray as we said he who the son sets free is free indeed this morning so I pray for release I pray for a peace I pray for a presence I pray for you God to control us and to guide us and direct us and to lead us into the people that you died for us to be. So thank you for this morning. Thank you for this chance to gather and thank you for allowing us to be in your house. In Jesus name I pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.